Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Lepakshi Khurana. Here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Tuesday, the 18th of October. Indian Prime Minister Modi calls to defeat terrorism worldwide at Interpol General Assembly. Imran Khan warns Pakistan government says long march won't be delayed past October. A Nepal poll body says candidature to be cancelled if mass rallies organised before November 3rd. And now for all the details, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Tuesday addressed the 90th Interpol General Assembly in New Delhi and called for cooperation in defeating crime, corruption and terrorism worldwide. The four-day event is being held in India after a gap of 25 years. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Tuesday inaugurated the 98th General Assembly of Interpol, the International Criminal Police Organization in New Delhi, and called for cooperation in defeating crime, corruption and terrorism worldwide. The four-day event is being attended by delegations from 195 member countries, comprising ministers, police chiefs of countries, heads of national central bureaus and senior police officers. PM Modi also released commemorative postal stamps and rupees 100 coins to mark the occasion. The Prime Minister in his address said, When nations and societies are becoming inward-looking, India calls for greater world cooperation for local welfare. He said from climate targets to vaccines, India has taken the lead in any kind of crisis. From climate targets to COVID vaccines, India has shown willingness to take the lead in any kind of crisis. And now, at a time when nations and societies are becoming inward-looking, India calls for more, not less, international cooperation. Global cooperation for local welfare is our call. The General Assembly is Interpol's supreme governing body and meets once a year to take key decisions related to its functioning. The meeting is taking place in India after a gap of about 25 years. And days after a Kashmiri Pandit was shot dead by a terrorist, two migrant labourers were killed in a grenade attack in Shopia district of India's northern German Kashmir on Tuesday. More than two dozen people, mainly members of the region's minority Hindu community and non-locals, have lost their lives in targeted killings by terrorists this year. Two migrant labourers were killed as terrorists lobbed grenade at them in Shopia district of India's northern Jammu and Kashmir in the early hours of Tuesday, two days after a Kashmiri Pandit was shot dead by terrorists in the same district. They were moved to a hospital after being critically injured but later succumbed to their injuries. The deceased were identified as Manish Kumar and Ram Sagar, both residents of northern Uttar Pradesh state. Police said that a terrorist of proscribed Pakistan-based terror outfit lashkar e taiba Imran Bashir Ghani from Shopia had been arrested, adding that further investigation and raids are going on. Ghani throw kya gaya? Jisme Uttar Pradesh ke do mazdoor the, maare gaye. Aur usme se jo jo throw kya grenade kya hai, heavy terrorist hai. Aur usko mlo ke raat mein pakar liye. Aur bahut saare aisa evidence mila hai, jisse proof hota hai. कि उसने ग्रेनेड थ्रो किया है उन्होंने कन्फेस भी कर लिया है बाकी उसके साथ जो भी और लड़के साथ चलते हैं उसको भी अरेस्ट किया गया है और हम लोग कोरोना सर्च जो जो हाईलोड बता रहे हैं वहां सर्च कर रहे हैं मीनवाइल हिंदू गवर्नमेंट एम्प्लॉयज एंड मेंबर्स ऑफ सोशियो पॉलिटिकल ऑर्गेनाइजेशन हेल्थ प्रोटेस्ट इन जम्मू सिटी ओवर द स्पेट इन टारगेटेड किलिंग्स बाई पाकिस्तान बेस्ड टेरर आउटफिट्स इन द रीजन 
they demanded enhanced security, relocation and strict action against the culprits. और दिन प्रतिदिन मतलब कि कश्मीर के हालात बदतर होते जा रहे हैं, बात सुरते हालात ठीक नहीं हैं, उस वजह से हम वहाँ पे कैसे नौकरी कर सकते हैं जब सिविल की नहीं हो रही है टारगेट की नहीं हो रही है मुलाजमों की हो रही है ना लोकल्स की हो रही है ओवर टू डजन पीपल मेनली मेंबर्स ऑफ द रीजन माइनॉरिटी हिंदू कम्युनिटी एंड नॉन लोकल्स हैव लॉस्ट दियर लाइफ इन टारगेटेड किलिंग्स बाई टेररिस्ट दिस ईयर इंडिया हैज लॉन्ग ब्लेम टेररिस्ट आर एडेड बाई पाकिस्तान टू स्प्रेड अनरेस्ट इन दश्मीर वैली In news from Pakistan, Pakistan's opposition PTI party chairman Imran Khan on Monday said that his anti-government long march would not be delayed past October as the party has completed its preparations. He said he is however giving the ruling government some more time to announce early elections before embarking on his protest. Pakistan's former prime minister and opposition PTI party chief Imran Khan on Monday warned Shehbaz Sharif led government that the anti government azadi or freedom march would not be delayed past october as they have completed their preparations in a press conference khan said he was still cutting the ruling government some slack so that they announced the date for the next general election he said he is actually giving them some more time before embarking on his long march protest he warned the government that multitudes of people would take to the streets responding to his call to the nation for the anti government march to kyunki election se dare hue hain ye mulk ko tabahi ki taraf dhakelte jayenge election nahi karwayenge isliye is waqt main inko aaj phir waqt de raha hu ye meri march october se aage nahi jaane lagi ye ab se leke october main kisi time announce karunga Reacting to PTI chairman Imran Khan's demand of holding early elections, the ruling coalition parties on Monday rejected the idea and said that deciding when the polls will take place is only the government's prerogative. In a joint statement, the coalition parties said that the government will not allow any mob to impose a decision related to the elections on the basis of force, adding that those who take the law into their hands will be dealt with according to the constitution and the law. And moving on locals in Gilgit Baltistan have lamented the dilapidated roads and lack of other basic infrastructure that is affecting the tourism sector in the illegally occupied region they blamed the Pakistan government has left all sections of the society at their own mercy over the years with no development in sight Gilgit Baltistan is home to diverse flora and fauna and features stunning valley and crystal blue lakes but the locals have blamed the government has failed to repair dilapidated roads and developed infrastructure to attract tourists over the years this said the recent torrential rains added to their woes as already poor roads were blocked due to flooding and landslides while the authorities did nothing to ease the connectivity keeping the tourists away हाँ पे इस कॉमन साइड में अटल जो नाला है वहाँ पर भी ऐसे कुछ सब लैंडस्केप्स है कि वहाँ देखने की जगह है लेकिन वहाँ रोड्स ना होने की वजह से मौसलाती निज़ाम यहाँ पर नहीं होने की वजह से लोगों को वहाँ एक्सेस नहीं है और दूसरी बात यह है कि बात वहीं पे आकर रुक जाती है कि मकमा टूरिज़म को इनको प्रोमोट करने की ज़रूरत है यही है कि इस साल बारिशों की वजह से जो है ना जो वो टूरिस्ट जो आ सकते थे उनकी जो है ना यहाँ पर प्रोग्राम्स काफ़ी कैंसलेशन हो गई वो नहीं आ सके और दूसरा चित्राल साइड आते थे उस साइड पे भी टूरिस्ट का जो है ना आना नामुमकिन हुआ वो रोड भी ब्लॉक हुआ और यहाँ पर कैजुअलिटीज हो गई इस तरह जो है ना मौसम की वजह से और यहाँ पे टूरिस्ट नहीं आ सके लोकल्स प्लेम पाकिस्तान इलीगल ऑक्यूपेशन हैज पोस्ट गिलगित बल्तिस्तान इन टू दी मोस्ट निगलेक्टेड बैकवर्ड एंड इम्पावरिश रीजन इन साउथ एशिया पाकिस्तान इन डिफरेंस टू द रीजन इज ऑल्सो रिफ्लेक्टेड इन दी फैक्ट दैट इट इज लार्जली ट्रीटेड एज अ कॉलोनी एंड डज नॉट है प्लेस इन एनी गवर्नमेंट फ्रेमवर्क Well, Nepal's election commission has warned that if candidates hold mass poll rallies before 3rd November, their candidatures will be cancelled. The Himalayan nation is slated to hold a general election for the national parliament and seven state assemblies on November 20th. Nepal's election commissioner Ram Prasad Bhandari has warned political parties and candidates that their candidature could be cancelled if they campaign before November 3 or 17 days before the November 20 general elections. 
Bhandari said parties and candidates can only run door-to-door -door programs before November 3 and nothing else. As per the election code of conduct, and even during such campaigns, candidates can only have more than 25 people accompanying them or use musical bands. The statement came in the backdrop of the ruling alliance's recent decision to hold election rallies in all seven provinces before November 3. Led by the centrist Nepali Congress Party and a group of former Maoist rebels, the five-party alliance, which has been in government since July last year, hopes to win voters' confidence in the general election for the 275-member parliament. Nepal, one of the poorest countries in Asia wedged between China and India, is recovering steadily after two years of the coronavirus pandemic and surging energy prices this year. The recent economic woes and political stability are expected to be a priority for voters in the election for the national parliament and seven state assemblies of the Himalayan nation. Sri Lankan author Shehan Karunathalka won the Booker Prize on Monday for his second novel, The Seven Moons of Mali Almeida, set amid the mayhem of the Sri Lankan civil war. In his acceptance speech, the author said he wishes his novel is read in a Sri Lanka that has understood that the ideas of corruption, race baiting and cronyism have not worked and will never work. Sri Lankan writer Shrihan Karunathilaka won the Booker Prize on Monday for his second novel, The Seven Moons of Mali Almeida, about a dead war photographer on a mission in the afterlife. Karunathilaka received a trophy from Queen Consort Camilla at the English Language Literary Awards' first in-person ceremony since 2019. He also gets a £50,000 prize. Set in 1990s Sri Lanka during the country's civil war, Karuna Tilaka's story follows gay war photographer and gambler Mali Almeida, who wakes up dead. Time is of essence for Mali, who has seven moons to reach out to loved ones and guide them to hidden photos he has taken depicting the brutality of his country's conflict. My hope for seven moons is this, yes. um, that in the not too distant future, 10 years or as long as it takes, that it is read in a Sri Lanka that has understood that these ideas of corruption and race baiting and cronyism have not worked and will never work. This year's shortlist of Booker Prize contenders included British author Alan Garner's Triacal Walker, Zimbabwean author No Violet Bulawayo's Glory, Small Things Like These by Irish writer Claire Keegan, US author Percival Everett's The Trees, and O. William by US author Elizabeth Strout. Indian devotees and foreigners thronged temples in India's Mathura to celebrate the beginning of the Hindu holy month of Karthik and offered prayers to Lord Krishna on Monday. Karthik is the eighth lunar month as per the Hindu calendar and is considered the holiest and most auspicious. Locals and foreigners in India's northern Mathura city were brimming with festive spirit as they celebrated the beginning of the Hindu holy month of Karthik and danced to the beat of religious hymns on Monday. They offered prayers and candles to the idol of Lord Krishna, the eighth incarnation of Lord Vishnu, the Hindu god of protection. Devotees from all across the world, including Russia, China and the US, were clad in traditional attires as they donned sandalwood holy marks known as Talak while chanting Hare Krishna. This month we can uh, to feel uh, more, uh, more Krishna, you know, more, uh, uh, more blessing of, uh, of Krishna, more blessing of Srila Prabhupada. special Chalra Kartika month hai isi month ko damodar mas bhi kaha jata hai aur kartik mahine mein vishesh karke dev dan ka vyavastha rakha kiya jata hai jo ki ek dev dan karne se lakho mane pure saal ka dev dan ka phal milta hai kartik is the eighth lunar month as per the hindu calendar and is considered the holiest People worship incarnations of Lord Vishnu with great devotion during this month. The spirit is considered auspicious for both spiritual and other worldly activities. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night.
सब्सक्राइब टैग टीवी यूट्यूब चैनल एंड प्रेस द नोटिफिकेशन बटन